Okay, folks, we've done some pretty cool things with ski area analysis. Let's step back a minute and kind of summarize and also to uh, advance our learning just a little bit more. What we did in that last segment was we figured out how many ski areas were near Denver. You could do the same thing, of course, for how many ski areas are near Fort Collins, Colorado Springs, Grand Junction, and any other city. We also talked about doing the same thing for how many ski areas are near uh, I-70. Near being 10 miles from I-70, 20 miles from I-70. You have the power with GIS. You set the criteria. You are structuring the investigation. And all the while, you are using spatial thinking. You're using the geographic perspective. A couple of other questions come to mind. How many ski areas are within 100 miles of Aspen? What percentage of Colorado ski areas are along Interstate Highway 70? What does this mean for traffic congestion along the highway? Considering all those ski areas along I-70, why is traffic a problem? Have you ever been in a traffic jam uh, in the winter along I-70, especially on Sunday afternoon? What are the alternative routes? In a mountainous area like this, uh, the, the alternative route might be hundreds of miles out of your way. You might have to uh, take vacation day the next day at work because you might not get back in time for Monday morning. What are the problems with the alternative routes in mountainous terrain? What are the ha some of the natural hazards that can occur? Mudslides, snowslides, avalanches, etc. Where is the highest concentration of ski areas in Colorado? One of the things you can do here is you could, using the same techniques that you used earlier, you could select one of these ski areas. And you could buffer, let's say, a 50 mile or 50 kilometer buffer around each ski, uh, around selected ski areas. Which ski area is closest to the greatest number of other ski areas? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's repeat that. Which ski area is closest to the greatest number of other ski areas? Another thing you can do is you can figure out the mean center of ski areas. What, what, at what point uh, would all the other ski areas sort of balance? If I had a point that was like a pencil point and all the other ski areas were a sheet of paper that's balancing on this pencil point, uh, at what point would that be? Where would that point be located? Would it be close to this sort of cluster of ski areas where we've been looking at? Keystone, Arapahoe Basin, Breckenridge? Or would it be a little bit farther down to the southwest because as we pointed out before, as you saw for yourself, uh, we've got Wolf Creek down there and Powderhorn way out to the west. Another thing that comes to mind is that there are certain mountain ranges with no ski area. So let's go ahead and zoom out to the whole state. Let's turn off the Denver buffer and uh, let's turn off cities for the moment. And let's just get back to the point where we've got ski areas. Let's even turn off the rivers here. Ski areas um, and the Continental Divide and the Shaded Relief for the state. Now let's go ahead and browse around the state. I can see that there's a there's a wonderful ski area up here in the north central part of the state called Steamboat Ski Area. And uh, it is a very large ski area. It is the only disadvantage is that it's a long ways from anywhere else. Uh, it's a long ways from other ski areas. So if you go to Steamboat, you're pretty much skiing there. You're not uh, like you know the afternoon going somewhere else. You're pretty much there the whole day. Uh, and I was also not uh, too many highways, as you can see from turning on the highways, that uh, go into Steamboat Ski Area. Uh, we can go ahead and see if we've got, open up, open up the attribute table behind highways. Do we actually have the route numbers for these highways? Um, it looks like uh, we might we might actually have that. We have a whole bunch more, though, that you could actually um, investigate if you, if you chose to. One of the things in here is we have the uh, average annual daily traffic. So taking the uh, traffic for a whole year and then dividing that uh, by 365 you get average annual uh, daily traffic. So what you could do is you could actually look at the traffic volume on all these highways in Colorado uh, which actually would be quite fascinating. So if we go ahead and sort um, on the average annual daily traffic and we take a look at some of these that are at the top of the list. What, what I did was I right-clicked on there and sorted descending so I have the, the highest numbers at the top as you can see here and at the lowest numbers are going to be uh, toward the bottom. So these numbers at the top are the busiest highways. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and highlight um, some of the, the ones that are maybe the top 13 and I'm going to go ahead and zoom to those and let's see where those, those actual uh, highway segments are. And then I'm going to zoom out. Looks like uh, not quite sure where that is yet, so we're we'll just keep zooming out. And ask the students, what is your hypothesis on the um, 
on where this highway is going to be located. Uh, it turns out that uh, it's very close to uh, one of the most notorious, probably the most notorious intersections in the state of Colorado, which is the mouse trap right here where I have my mouse pointing. Ha, the mouse pointing at the mouse trap. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, boy. Anyway, moving on. Uh, that is the mouse trap. And that is where I-70 and I-25, Interstate 70 and Interstate 25, intersect. So it's no surprise that the average annual daily traffic on this segment of Interstate 25 south of the mousetrap, which actually goes through central Denver here, let's go ahead and turn on the cities, uh, that goes through central Denver, is the busiest um, in terms of of the highway. So let's go ahead and look at the what was the uh, figure for the average annual daily traffic. Hmm, where was that? Here it is. 314,000 cars uh, or vehicles per day, uh, ranging from that down to 311,000, but quite a bit, right? Quite a bit. Um, but anyway, fascinating. What you could do is you could you could change the symbology for um, the highways. So let's go ahead and do that. I double-clicked on the highways layer. Now I'm going to go to uh, the symbology tab in the properties for highways, okay? And I don't want the same symbol for every one of those. What I want is I want quantities, okay? And I want graduated symbols. In other words, I want a thicker line for a busier highway. I want a thinner line for a, a less busy highway, okay? So I want quantities, graduated symbols. And what field do I want? Remember I said uh, we looked at average annual daily traffic, which is right here, AADT. Okay, it's just telling me there's a bunch of records in here. We know that. Now we've got a default set of symbols there. If you don't want that, if you want to change the colors or whatever uh, you want to whatever you want, that's fine. I'm going to bump up my maximum size. I'm going to change my minimum to one. I'm going to bump up my maximum to well, let's try eight. See what that looks like. Okay, so my less traveled roads are going to be a thinner line. My more frequently traveled roads are going to be a thicker line. And uh, let's just say OK there and see how that goes. OK, so now we're still in Denver. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the shaded relief for the moment. All right, so there's my highlighted road still, still, still highlighted. These roads around Denver, as no surprise, I still have Denver selected, so that's why I've got a yellow symbol out there. Um, but that's no surprise. Let's go ahead and turn on the labels again for cities. So right click on cities and turn on labels. All right, so what I see here is that I t Interstate 25 from Denver to Fort Collins, for example, a very busy highway. Uh, it's a thick line. US 36 from Denver to Boulder. Uh, all these highway, a lot of these highways in Denver, uh, thick lines, right? So let's go ahead and pan out to the west here along Interstate 70. As you can see, uh, that is uh, it's fairly well traveled, right? As opposed to some of these other roads. Um, in here. Now another powerful thing we can do is we don't have to just symbolize. We can actually label the highways based on their traffic. So let's go ahead and do that. If you want to label the highways based on their traffic, let's go ahead and right click on highways. Let's go ahead and go to properties. Okay. We've just been hanging out in the symbology tab. Let's go over to the labels tab. Okay. So right, right there is a labels tab. And I want to label the feature not based on the route number but I want to actually label it based on the AADT okay my text symbol is going to be this I think I'll leave it like that um, if you don't like that you can change it alright I'm gonna leave it I'm I'm happy with Arial 9 point for the moment uh, maybe I want it not to be black though maybe I want the color to be a bluish color yeah okay once you're happy with that go ahead and say okay and now Oh, one more thing we need to do. Uh, I'm going to right click there again, go to properties. We're back in the same um, screen we were, but see up here in the upper left, label features in this layer. We want to have that clicked on. If we don't have that clicked on, it's not going to label the features. So we now go ahead and say OK. And now we're going to uh, pause while this uh, comes up. Now, these boxes are the average annual daily traffic. So I can see here at Vail at I-70, 24,300 cars or vehicles per day. As I get toward Denver, the uh, what's your hypothesis? Is the uh, average annual daily traffic going to increase or decrease? So let's go ahead and pan over to Denver. Uh, 42,000 around Idaho Springs, 43,000. Okay, now I'm getting into Metro Denver. And uh, 
I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm seeing now in the hundreds of thousands. What's your hypothesis as we as we go east out of Metro Denver along Interstate 70? Now we're not talking about skier traffic and notice how it markedly drops off. We've got 12,000 uh, out here, 10,000. As we get down toward the town of Lyman here, 9,000. Let's get out toward the Kansas line, up around 11,000, 10,000. Okay, so you could use this to do some pretty powerful things. What we've done in this segment is we've explored the traffic counts along highways and talked about why would a person wanting to locate a ski area locate it near a place that's heavily trafficked. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for joining me on that investigation.